on the table in front of me I've got a number of oval sapphires that I've been cataloguing this morning. Uh, as you can see I've got them inverted at the moment, upside down that is, um, because I've just finished taking pictures of them and I'm just about ready to put them in their bags. But what I uh, thought I'd just explain how the uh, colour in these ovals is, is created. And you can see here that there's very clear colour distinction when you look at the uh, the bottom, the pavilion of the gemstone. You can clearly see here the separation in the blue and the yellow. Sometimes there's a large chunk of blue, other times there's wisps of blue through the gem. Wispy, That's very, this is very wispy, this one here. Quite wispy, quite, quite light blue through it. This one here is quite uh, quite distinct in its in its blue, and also this one here you get quite a large blue chunk in the in the gem. This one also quite a large amount of blue. So in my next clip, I'm going to show what happens when we take them and turn them upside down and I'll start with uh, with this one here so I've turned up this um, upside down this gem and we can see here just a, a sliver of blue running running from east to west across the bottom part of the gem and the stones about a 8 by 6 close enough to we turn the gem over and just see what impact that has. Very little impact really. It's uh, just got a little shade of blue there bouncing around the stone but there's really not too much of an impact on this particular gem. So let's have a look at another one or two as well. Well this is another gem and this one uh, this stone has quite a bit of blue in it. It's about eight and a half by six and a half mil, so it's a bigger gem. And uh, you can clearly see the the separation of yellow and blue in the stone. So let's turn it over. And what we see is the reflection of that blue down onto the bottom of the stone. It sort of creates a bit of a greeny colour. And of course up in the top there you can see the blue. So the other thing in this is it actually separates the colour, or the colour is separated quite distinctly in this gem. So when you turn it around you'll get that blue flash come through various parts of the stone. Let's have a look at another one as well. Well here I've got another oval cut sapphire and we can see some very very light wisps of blue uh, mixed in with this particular yellow stone when we look at the, uh, the bottom side, the pavilion. Now when we turn the stone over we'll see what happens. Very pretty. So you see there the dispersion of the blue is really quite accentuated. You've got the yellow in the middle a light blue on the far left and then the darker blue up in the uh, the top side but we've also got some reflection of the yellow up there in the top as well this is quite a pretty stone so again in many cases you just don't know what you're going to get until you cut the gem you can control it somewhat by orientating the gem in certain ways but mostly it's until the gem is cut you really don't you really don't know what you're going to get well this is the final oval that I'm looking at here this is um, a larger one 10.6 by about 6.8 it was quite a large stone so we're looking at the pavilion at the bottom of the gem and you can see the uh, the blue line there stretching up on the side back up to the, the top end most of it's yellow 
but a reasonable amount of that blue there. So there's very little yellow in the tip of the stone, or what we call the culet. So let's turn it over and have a look. So what we've seen again is the dispersion of the blue through the gemstone and some lovely reflections here of colour. We've got the blue up in the top section and we've got running into the yellow and then the lighter blue down on this bottom section here now. Again, some great colour dispersion as a result of the separation of the colours.